want anything bad enough, don't make excuses. You gotta lose your time and your sleep for it. You find a way. Boxing King Media in association with Box Row. Delighted to be joined by Mr. John Scully, all the way from Connecticut. Have I said that right? Yes, sir. How are you doing, sir? You good? Yeah, yeah, everything's great. Thank you. Great. Uh, thank you for obviously giving me some of your time. Uh, I don't think you've done many interviews since Arto's win over uh, Callum Smith. Um, uh, j just for fans who, you know, just for the British fans, just to make them aware, could you just give us a, a brief overview of your role within Arto's team alongside uh, Coach Ramsey? Um, well, I've been with Arthur for eight years now, and, uh, you know, I go to training camp with him every time he fights, and, uh, you know, I work on the pads with him, I work on techniques with him, and uh, I work with Mark uh, as far as what the game plan is, and we uh, we uh, just work towards that. So, um, you know, I've, I've been a member of the team for eight years, pretty solid. So you, you know Arto pretty well. So I just want to ask you, in the build-up to the fight with Callum Smith, you know, where did you guys see Callum as in compared to Arto's previous opponents in terms of risk and what, what he brought to the table? Um, Honestly, I thought, and I think the general consensus was that we had to be very careful, that he had a very good left hook, a sneaky left hook, and, uh, you know, Arto was going to have to be on his, on his game uh, to avoid that, you know, it was uh, it was something we were going to have to look out for the entire fight. And Arthur, you know, the thing is, he's always on his game, so it's hard to sneak up on him with with certain things. He knows what he has to do, and and he uh, he understood the assignment, and and he got it done. And obviously, it was made. Uh, it was quite a big story in in fight week, especially when. You know, the news broke of this atypical finding from VADA. Uh, whilst you guys were in camp, I'm guessing you was notified about it in December. Did that disrupt any preparation? How did that kind of affect you guys in, in the build-up to the fight? Um, I don't think it, it it affected anything. Like, we never really even talked about it, to be honest with you. I, I When I heard about it, I asked Mark about it, and we talked about it for about 20 seconds and he just blew it off and and that was the end of it um you know he 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 didn't get caught you know it's an atypical one he's he's got a high natural level and, and that's the end of it he didn't do anything illegal you know it's an insult to him to do you know to accuse him if people are doing that it's an insult you know for this man for his work ethic and and how hard he works and how hard he trains, even even right after the fight, like you know, for most fighters, when the fight is over, that's it; they stop training. But Arthur trains, you know. I'm sure he trained this morning at seven o'clock. I'm sure he was up working out. You know, that's what he does, and it's an insult. This man, in particular, to try and uh you know slander his name especially when like i say he did nothing illegal happened he didn't fail a test um you know if he did the fight would have been off so i think they they just tried to disrupt him uh they tried to slander his name but it didn't work and they don't understand because they're dealing with a different type of human being like he doesn't pay attention to these type of things he's he's so focused in tunnel vision that you cannot disrupt him. In when that finding came out, because a lot of people uh, in the boxing industry had not even heard of the term atypical. Uh, from my understanding and from what I've read, and as, as you've just confirmed there, th did they do like more testing? Because I think that's how I've read it. Vada then do like a further investigation, and then they kind of try and get to the root cause of why it, there was a spike. Th did they do more testing that you're aware of? Um, to be completely honest, I have no idea. Like we didn't, it was, it was literally the entire incident resulted in a 15 second conversation with me and Mark. And that was it. We never talked about it again. It was a, it was a non-issue. And then obviously the fight proceeded, uh, Arto obviously put on another dominant performance. Um, and obviously immediately after we saw, uh, a lot, a lot of people obviously become quite vocal about the atypical finding. Uh, I don't know if you saw a tweet from Tony Bellew. Did you watch, see the tweet? I, you know, I didn't see, I heard he said something 
you know, kind of goofy. I don't, I don't know what it was exactly. I'll, I'll, I'll read it out to you. Uh, in short, he obviously gave Otto the credit for his win. Uh, and then he basically said he's 39. He's getting more destructive. Physically, that's not usually possible, but he's doing it. And then he said our great sports our great sport needs looking at like baseball was with a red angry emoji, um, Im implying that there's obviously some foul play. Nonsense. Listen, he's not getting more destructive. He's he's the same destructive he's always been. This is nothing new. This is not a new thing. You know, and I think sometimes, no offense to him, but sometimes when people see other people doing things that they couldn't do, they figure there must be a, you know, a reason for it other than just that the guy's that good, that the guy's that strong, that he's that focused. I mean, you know, if I can't do something, I can't, I can't slander someone who can, you know, just to look, make them look bad and make me feel a little better about myself. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, Tony couldn't, couldn't do those things. He couldn't maintain that. That doesn't mean other people can't. You know, Bernard Hopkins went to almost 50 years old, 10 years older than Arthur is now. And Bernard Hopkins was just as good as he ever was. What do you say about that? You know, Bernard Hopkins and, and, and Arthur are extremely similar. And maybe it's maybe it's it's they should lead by example. Arthur and and, and uh Bernard are very similar in their mentality and the way they train and the way they focus and the de level of dedication that goes above and beyond what literally 99% of the other fighters in the world do. You know, instead of accusing someone of something, maybe they should say, hey, maybe we should follow the examples of Arthur and Bernard Hopkins and be able to fight later on. You know, because Bernard, Bernard did it 10 years before Arthur did it. You know, because obviously, uh, because of the way the fight went, obviously Callum's brothers, Paul uh, Smith, uh, Liam Smith, uh, they obviously all made passing comments on on the atypical finding. But even if the tables were switched and if it, if it was Callum that had an atypical finding, could you see it from their point of view how they may be, I don't know, the word suspicious is fair to use or, or whatever. I don't know if you get what I'm saying or do you think they should I judge? I mean, the thing is this. Mm -hmm. The fight happened. The mm -hmm. fight was not canceled. Arthur was not suspended. Arthur was not fined. You know, they 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 found nothing wrong. It was atypical. They, you know, he he he's the what he has in his body is naturally produced. Everybody on earth has it. He, you know what I mean? So he did nothing wrong. There's nothing, there's nothing to see here. Uh, but people you know, they just can't believe that a guy could be that dedicated, that focused, that strong, maintain that level of, you know, mentality this late in his career. And he should be praised for it instead of accused of something for it. I spoke to coach Dominic Engel and uh, he's into his health and nutrition. And he said to me, to his knowledge, Otto doesn't drink or smoke. Uh, and from what he knows, he's been this sort of destructive for the last 20 years, even from these amateur days. I know he dropped Usyk in the amateurs with a body shot. Yeah. So it has has it always been like that? You know, obviously you probably know his of history. Of course. Art, I remember hearing about Arthur knocking out Ishmael Shalak in the amateurs. If you remember him, the black Russian. Yeah. Very good fighter. Very good fighter. And, and Arthur knocked him out twice. You know, Arthur's been doing this for 20 years. This is nothing new. Uh, you know, I, I in, a, in a way, I consider it a compliment because when people accuse you of something, that means you're doing something extraordinary. And in their mind, it must be more than something just than your own desire and, and you know, mentality. You know, that's I, I would take it take it as a compliment. Like you're so strong, you must be doing something illegal. You've got to be, you know, and, and to me, it's like mentality wise, if I was fighting someone like Arthur, I wouldn't I wouldn't say anything because all that would tell them is 
I'm over here in fear. I'm over here in disbelief of what I'm about to face. You know, I understand that this man is something special. And uh, like I say, to recognize the fact that there are special athletes out there who have a mentality and have a desire and have a strength. And like I say, uh, if they can want to Google it, they can see that that what he has is naturally produced in his body. It's not something illegal that he's taking. So I think people need to educate themselves a little bit more before they they try to make a guy look bad. Well, thank you for clearing that up. Uh, and obviously looking forward, we've got Dimitri Bivol. To my knowledge, I don't know if there's suggestion that the fight's signed. You know, what, what's your knowledge of that? Uh, is it signed? And if so, when can we expect to see that happen? Um, to be honest, I, I have no idea. I literally have no idea. Um, you know, I, I always, I don't get involved with the business end of things. I, I literally just wait for them to call me and tell me when the next fight is. So I, I never ask because, you know, the boxing business is, it's always, you know, stop and go and, you know, you got to do this and you got to work this out. So I don't even get involved with that. I just wait till they tell me it's done. Have you spoke to Arta since the fight? Is he aware of you know what what's been said by people, etc.? Is he bothered about any of that kind of stuff? Uh, nah, he doesn't care. He doesn't, he doesn't care at all. Like he doesn't. He knows who he is and what he does and what he does to prepare. So he doesn't worry about things that people say. He doesn't concern himself with that type of stuff. Yeah, I think I spoke to somebody and they said he his mentality is that only God can judge him, not mankind. Right. 100%, 100%. And then does he do the same thing to Dimitri Bivol or is that a whole different person? Well, you know, Bivol is very good, obviously. You know, uh, a lot of a lot of teams, a lot of boxing teams, trainers and managers, if you ask them about an upcoming opponent, they will tell you, ah, the guy's not that good. He's not that strong. And they always try to downplay the guy to make him look bad. But then... After you beat him, it's like, all right, you just beat a guy you told us wasn't even that good. You know, so it's it's kind of stupid. Yeah, Dimitri's very good. He's a good boxer. He's you know, he's got the skills, he's got all that, but so is Arthur. And Arthur has certain things that Dimitri doesn't have. You know what I mean? And uh, you know, I mean if I'm 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 certainly confident you know a lot of people you know and rightfully so but they're they're high on dimitri but if you subconsciously or or not people will have to admit they are high on him based solely and specifically on his domination of canelo alvarez right mm -hmm. now that's fine that's good but canelo alvarez is a very small man he's nothing even remotely close to uh to Arthur. You know what I mean? So, you know, dominating Canelo as a light heavyweight compared to Arthur is not is not the same thing. So while it's a great win and, a, and impressive and all of that, I'm not as, you know, in awe of it as other people might be. So I think uh uh Bavol is very, very good. But if they're basing everything just on the the win over Canelo, I think that would be a mistake on their part. Is uh, one quick answer for this, uh, John? Is is it going to be Otto's hardest fight, uh, Dimitri Bivol? I think stylistically, it could, you know it could everything combine you know the 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 moment. Uh, but by the same token, Arthur does not seem to be a guy that gets affected by certain things. You know what I mean? Like like the moment and the. Uh, you know, the situation and, and different things. I don't think he lets things bother him. You know, he, he sees people, his opponents as just simply men, men that he has, you know, they're just individuals. And uh, so far it's worked very well for him. Um, you know, it's going to be a big fight. It's going to be a huge fight, but I think in, in many ways in Arthur's mind, it's just another fight. And uh, the last question, His Excellency Turki al Sheikh has suggested the winner will fight Jaya Pattaya, which means moving up to cruiserweight. Could you see Otto doing that? If successful? Um, honestly, I have no idea about that. I mean, I mean, with all due respect, but I don't think that guy, you know, it's not his place to map out Arthur's career. 
You know, what I mean, like he, you know, he has no say about that. You know, maybe that's what he wants, but that has no bearing on what we do. Okay, um, Mr. Scully, as always, it's a pleasure. I think we met in Plant City a few months ago, and I don't know where we'll meet again, but I appreciate your time. Um, I'm sure. like, get get on with the with your day. All right, buddy. Thank you for having me very much. I appreciate that, brother. Take care. You want anything bad enough? Don't make excuses. You gotta lose your time and your sleep for it. You find a way.